Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining me here on this Buying a Home in the Netherlands New Builds on Plan webinar. Um, thanks as well for taking some time out of this finally sunny day. It's been a, been a few weeks, but I think the sun is uh, making its way back. So that's, that's very nice to see. Um, before we get started, good for you guys to know is that today's session will be recorded, not just well the, the video recording, but also the presentation slides. Everything will be shared with you guys uh, most likely tomorrow and otherwise, well, at least before the before the weekend starts. So if you do have to drop out, um, have a meeting to go to or anything like that, feel free to do so um, as we'll share everything with you guys as well. Um, well, let me introduce myself. My name is Ludo. Uh, you can see my, my picture on the screen and hopefully you can see the video as well. I am um, an expat buying manager in um, the, the Amsterdam region. I work for Expat Housing Network. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, born and raised, but moved to the US for a couple of years as an expat child. Um, but after three years decided to, together with my parents that we well, had to move back to the most beautiful country here. Um, <clears throat> I am a proud father. It's not a proud father of, of two kids, but I'm a proud father of two cats. If you guys are lucky, they, they might jump up um, and, and show themselves as they uh, love the attention. <laughs> I live in a, a new built property. I used to live in a very old property um, in the city center, lived in the east of Amsterdam as well, in a property from around the 70s, 80s. Uh, but then two years ago, moved to a new built property in the north of Amsterdam. Um, so well, I've seen it all and have to say, once you go new, uh, you won't go back <laughs> because it is really, really wonderful, especially now with the gas prices, for example, to, to be able to live in a property that is so well insulated, etc. <clears throat> um, I'm not here by myself. I'm joined here by our partner from VZ. Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you so much, Ludo. Uh, so my name is Andrew. I work for VZ Expat Mortgages. Uh, we are uh, well, a very nice team that uh, would like to realize your Dutch living dream. Um, I have Egyptian roots. Uh, I actually bought a property in uh, 2021. Uh, I actually got married on a Monday, uh, got the keys to my property on a Wednesday, and actually flew to my honeymoon the same night. So it was quite quite an hectic period, but I managed to survive. Um, and I'm happy to answer uh, any kind of questions about the whole financial kind of perspective that you have to keep in mind when you buy a new build. And I'll explain a bit more about that later on as well. Perfect. Thanks very much uh, for that introduction, Andrew. So what we're talking about today, um, obviously, I'll give you a, a small introduction. We'll be talking about the pros and cons of uh, owning and buying a new built property. Um, good to give you guys some information about the current market, uh, what the difference is between well, uh, existing built market and the new build market, um, the price and costs that correlate with that. Um, what the buying process will look like in general from A to Z and how that is also different from the um, buying process of an existing built property. We'll dive into uh, what the 5% rule and guarantee is and how that uh, or how you can use that to your benefit, um, where to find the listings and uh, we'll touch base on an Andrew most um, predominantly we'll touch base on the financial topics and the mortgage information. We'll do a Q&A afterwards as well. Um, if you guys do have questions during the webinar, feel free to already pop them in the Q&A or in the chat. My uh, lovely colleague Rick is here today as well to assist with that. So we'll answer all the questions during the webinar. If we still have questions left after the webinar, or at least after the, the topics that I just mentioned, we'll touch base on them as well. We'll answer them live and uh, yeah, have a, have a live discussion on that. Um, a little bit about uh, Expert Housing Network. So I don't uh, run this operation by myself. As I just mentioned, Rick is here um, and he is from the Netherlands, speaks Dutch, speaks English as well. Um, we have our colleague Kimo, also from the Netherlands, but has Caribbean roots. Alana from Ireland, Giovanna and Rafaela, both from Brazil. Um, and uh, well, together we form the buying team. So if you guys um, are interested to eventually work with EHN, you'll be in touch with either me or one of the people you see on the screen here. 
Um, Rick is based in Rotterdam. So if you are planning to buy in Rotterdam or Den Haag, then Rick can help you out. Giovanna in Eindhoven, Rafaela in Groningen, and uh, Kimo and I in, um, in Amsterdam, uh, and Alana as well. So um, yeah, it doesn't really matter where you're buying in the Netherlands, we'll be able to assist you. Um, <clears throat> Alrighty, well, let's talk about some pros and cons. First of all, very obvious things. When buying a new build property, it's um, the, the, one of the biggest pros is that you can fully design uh, the property towards your own taste. Um, depending a little bit on the project that you're working with, you'll either be co-developing um, or developing by yourself, or sometimes you'll have, a, when you're buying, for example, into a neighborhood, then there's an architect that has already um, outlined the structures, but you can still, from the inside, change everything towards your own taste. Um, nowadays, there are so many uh, requirements that the property needs to meet. Also, one of them is that it needs to be quite uh, either energy efficient or um, uh, pretty much neutral, meaning that your energy label will be very good, either an A and nowadays sometimes even A plus, A plus plus. Um, maintenance is limited. Property has just been built, meaning that you know paintwork, work on the roof, that kind of stuff, yeah, will take at least five to ten years before you need to do any maintenance on that side. Um, correlates towards lower costs. Um, there's no transfer tax. So to touch base a bit on this, transfer tax is the tax that you're paying once ownership is transferred from one person to another. However, when buying a new build, um, yeah, property hasn't been owned yet by someone else, meaning that transfer tax is not applicable. Saves you a direct cost of 2% uh, of the purchase price. So that is quite uh, significant. You are paying uh, VAT over a new build property. However, this VAT is already included in the purchase price. So uh, no additional cost there. Uh, there's also no appraisal. Um, the bank sees the, the yeah, purchase price of a new build property as the actual value of the property, meaning that an appraisal cost of around 800 to 900 euros is also something that you uh, don't have to worry about. Well, there are some, some cons when buying a, a new build property. And first of all, uh, and a very obvious one is that you uh, well, can't view the property, right? The property hasn't been built yet. So therefore um, you can't go to the property and see what it is like to actually be in that, in that property. What you'll do is you'll go to a uh, meeting with the developer or with the selling agent. That person will share all the information about the property um, and sometimes give you 3D, 3D pictures to give you some kind of sense of what, what it is like to be inside of the property, but yeah, bigger picture, you can't really go to the viewing. Um, you'll most likely need a subscription to be able to buy a property, so you'll subscribe to the uh, project's website or through the developer's website, um, and via there actually get a spot to or get the opportunity to purchase the property. Sometimes it goes via a lottery system. Sometimes it's just first come first serve, but you will need to have take some additional steps to actually um, yeah, subscribe and secure the property. Um, well, if you buy a new build property, you're buying a, a project. In other words, property still needs to be built. So typically it takes around one to two years before the property is actually delivered or before you get the keys of the property. Um, and that means that you need uh, uh, yeah, another kind of ac accommodation for those one or two years. Well, this is typically rent. So someone will be renting and at one point you'll have double costs. You'll have your rent and your um, yeah, already mortgage costs for the property that is being built. We'll touch base on this a little bit later, how that actually works. Um, but you won't buy the property and move in in a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can see this as a pro and as a con. We listed it as a con because uh, now in the current market, it is um, more and more the norm to actually negotiate on the, the, the price that you see. Uh, when buying a new build property, there's really no negotiation possible. What you see is what you get. In other words, the, the price is a, a price that you'll be paying at the notary at the end as well. Um, this used to be a good thing where, you know, prices, there would be a lot of overbidding on the uh, properties, but now it's also possible to underbid sometimes uh, when buying a new build, this is not really um, the norm. Um, this is what I just mentioned as well, you know, when buying a new build, you'll need some extra accommodation for the moment or for the time being that the property is being built, meaning you'll have double costs with your existing houses, housing. Um, Okay, then some market information. 
So let's talk about some numbers from the last quarter. Um, <clears throat> what we see is that there are currently 8,200 yeah, new uh, built properties for sale. This is a lot less than, um, than last year. A couple of factors, primarily that the material costs have gone up. Um, there are also some um, yeah, new rules and regulations regarding the nitrogen um, uh, um, yeah, nitrogen, how would I say this? The amount that a new build project can uh, give out in regards to nitrogen, so to say. Um, you see that now also with the farmers and such, that this is a, a big topic. It also affects the housing market. And uh, because of this, yeah, less properties are being built, less properties are on, on sale. Um, average house price has gone up year to date that's good to to keep in mind um where and we'll, we'll see this later on as well where existing builds have gone down a little bit new build properties have risen um average house price now 496 and um the amount of days that a new build property needs to to actually sell is roughly 30 days um this is higher than a uh, existing build but that just has to do with the fact that not you know, it's, it's a little bit easier to buy an existing build property compared to buying a new build property. Well, this is what I just said. If we see the, the red um, line being existing build and blue line being new build, um, starting from Q2 of last year, prices on the existing build have gone down um, uh, slightly, where the prices of new build have been increasing since then. Um, yeah, these are numbers up to Q3 of 2022. They're now collecting all the information on 2000, uh, Q4 of 2022. Um, what I see from the market is that um, not a lot has changed from this graph, actually. So uh, existing build is still decreasing slightly. Uh, we had a small discrepancy in uh, February compared to, compared to January, where there was a little bit of an increase again. Uh, new build is stabilizing a little bit. It's it's. I'm curious to see how um, yeah the the rise in material costs is going to in uh, how the increase of material costs is going to affect the market in the future now as well. Um, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so let's talk about um, why the prices have increased. We've all heard that, uh, you know, especially in 2021, 2022, prices have increased drastically, um, more so for the existing build, but as we just saw also for the um, uh, new build properties. A few things. First of all, there are a bunch of fiscal benefits currently at play. Um, first of all, the, the interest rebate. So as you know, if you take out a mortgage, uh, obviously you're repaying on your loan part, but you're also paying interest, the part where the money, the bank makes money. Um, now there's a, a interest rebate scheme in the Netherlands where at the end of the year, when you're doing your annual income taxes, you can get back roughly 36, 37% of the uh, interest that you've paid. So um, in other words, it's a lot more attractive to actually take out a loan in that sense. Um, there are no capital gains in the Netherlands. So if you uh, make money by uh, money, pretty much, um, you do not have to pay any tax over that. In other words, if you buy a property and you sell it and you make a nice profit on it, um, your investment has paid off, then all that money you can put back into your, your own pocket or use for a next purchase or anything like that. You don't have to pay any capital gains on that. Um, well, there's a low interest rate, of course. Yeah, uh, you know, interest rates have been a lot lower than they are uh, today, um, roughly around one and a half percent, even a little bit lower with, with variable rates and such. They have been rising where, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but now uh, around the four and a half mark. Um, this is still historically low. Um, <clears throat> if we look back, let's say 2005, 2006, that we were still in the double digits. Um, if we look at other countries around us, like uh, you know France, uh, Italy, Germany, Spain, uh, Portugal, all these interest rates are a lot higher. So we're still on the lower side, making money rather cheap. Um, the importance of the energy label has uh, increased since, well, everything that's going on between Ukraine and Russia, or Russia and the world. Um, the gas prices have increased rapidly, and therefore having a energy efficient property really 
uh, became more and more important and people are uh, willing to you know, overbid more on properties that have a, a lower energy level or better energy level, so to say. Um, well, this is something that, that has been the case for, for the last couple of years and I think will stay uh, the same as well for the coming years. Uh, and that's the high rents. Rent money down the drain, pretty much paying off someone else's mortgage. Uh, with this cost being on the high side, uh, people tend to steer more towards a mortgage where they're paying off their own mortgage or their own loan and uh, putting money in the bricks of their property and eventually, hopefully, with a, um, a little bit of a rise in the market, make some profit on it. Um, with the rents that keep on rising, we see more and more people steering towards purchase properties. Um, now, this is hopefully something that will, um, you know, uh, uh, go down when uh, looking in five or 10 years or so, but there's still currently a lack of supply in the market, uh, meaning that there are just more people looking for a home compared to the amount of uh, properties available. Uh, that's a very easy math equation. When demand is higher than the offer, prices will go up, right? So this is something that uh, is, is currently at play and therefore prices are increasing. Now, this is something I mentioned already before, the cost of materials. Um, due to also COVID, the, the transport lines that have been, um, uh, yeah, I would say this, it's more difficult to actually transport all the, the costs and or all the materials around the world. The costs have been, have been going up. Um, so this is something that has affected especially the new build projects. Um, then the price and costs of buying a new build property. Well, <clears throat> um, it's a little bit lower than buying an existing build property. And that is because the, the, the price that you see on Funda or on the, the website that you're looking at is typically an all-in price. Um, vrij op naam in Dutch, free by name in, uh, in English. And what we mean with that is that the majority of the costs are already included. Um, in this case, we're talking notary fee of the transfer deeds, the registration in the land registry, and the VAT of the purchase price. Good to keep in mind is that these costs are all related to the actual purchase and um, registration of the property on your name. So if you are taking out a mortgage and notary needs to uh, draft up a mortgage deed, this uh, cost is not included. Um, a technical inspection, for example, is not included. You know, th those kinds of things are not included, but pretty much everything you need to get the property on your name is already included. Whereas buying a, um, a existing build, also the transfer deed is uh, still something you need to pay for. The uh, research and registration costs for the land registry or the cadaster is not included and, and needs to be paid. The 2% transfer tax is not included. So um, it's a lot cheaper in that sense to buy a new build. Um, however, uh, a small disclaimer here, it is good to keep in mind that when buying a new build, it might be the case that uh, you're buying a shell apartment or a shell uh, project, meaning that, for example, there's no kitchen included yet, there's no bathroom included yet, there's no flooring, maybe the doors are not in there yet, so um, it might be the case that you need to add an additional um, uh, yeah, budget for the extra work and finishing that needs to happen. So. This is why it's also very important to go through all the information and documentation you receive from the project that you're interested in, uh, because I've had cases where um, even the, the warm water in the kitchen was not included. Well, if you find this, uh, find out this part when getting the keys of the property, it can be quite a, a burden. Um, so yeah, good to check, check all those things. But generally speaking, uh, it is an all in price that you see. Um, uh, a broader overview of the cost that you can expect. Well, first uh, first of all, the, the transfer tax. When buying a new build, no transfer tax, so 0% of the purchase price. Uh, you will be paying VAT, but this is already included in the purchase price. Same goes for the registration in the land registry and the transfer deed of the notary. Mortgage deed, uh, typically between 700 to 1300 euros. Um, when working with a bank or a mortgage advisor, they will charge you between 1500 euros and let's say 2900 euros for their consultation costs. Um, when working with a, a real estate agent, they will typically charge you uh, one to two percent of the purchase price. Now, uh, we charge a fixed percentage, and this is uh, well, we'll see this a little bit later on, but um, oh, sorry, no, for the new build uh, package, we actually charge a fixed fee, not even a percentage, but a fixed fee, but I'll show you this uh, later on. 
Um, so that will be a little bit cheaper than working with a, a typical real estate agent. An appraiser, well, something we won't need when buying a new build, but uh, this is typically 800 to 1,000 euros. Technical inspection, well, as you guys can imagine, um, when buying the a project, you can't have a technical inspection because the project hasn't been finished yet or the property has not been built yet. Um, but what we do always advise you to do is to have a technical inspector go through the technical description of the property. So you'll receive a lot of documentation. One of those documents is a very, very long document uh, where they pretty much write out in words how the property is going to work, so to say. So where the uh, electrical outlets are going to be, what kind of electrical outlets are there are going to be, but also what kind of doors with what kind of handles, uh, just pretty much everything written out, how the property will, will look like and how it will be. Um, I will obviously go through this, make sure that everything is up to our expectations, but it's also nice to have a technical inspector look uh, at the documentation to make sure that the all the technical installations that will be installed into the property are up to the, the current norm and up to the current expectations as well. Um, for a half an hour, it's around um, 49 euros. A half an hour is sufficient to actually go through this document. Um, technical inspection can also happen after the delivery of the project. Um, you, you will go through the property with me with the uh, developer or the selling agent and um, in this case also with the technical inspector to again make sure that everything is in line with the technical description that we received before around 299 euros um, well when you go to the notary to sign the transfer deed and potentially also the mortgage deed uh, this appointment funny enough even though all the notaries in the Netherlands speak fluent English this appointment needs to happen in Dutch that has to do with the fact that if it doesn't happen in Dutch, then it's not seen as a legal um, or a fully legal appointment. Um, so therefore it needs to happen in Dutch. If you don't master the Dutch language, you'll need to have an interpreter uh, present. Now this interpreter typically charges 290 to 320 euros. Um, have a look if you, the language that you, uh, your, your mother tongue is a, a language that not a lot of people speak. It might be the case that uh, that language or that interpreter is uh, more expensive. Uh, typically, English is the cheapest, as pretty much everyone in the interpreting world speaks English as well. So uh, that might be the cheaper option for you. Um, well, when buying a property, existing build or new build, you'll need to make a deposit. Uh, this deposit is 10% of the um, uh, property purchase price. If you don't have that 10% laying around in your own savings, which is quite fair, then you can ask the bank to make the deposit on your behalf. This is called a bank guarantee. Bank guarantee is either 250 euros or 1% of the guaranteed amount. Um, well, uh, uh, Andrew will touch base on this a little bit later on, but NHG, that stands for Nationale Hypothekgarantie, or in other words, in English, the National Mortgage Guarantee. Being able to use um, an additional insurance when the property value has gone under the, the uh, price that you've purchased the property for or under the amount that you still have a mortgage for and you are forced to sell the property due to whatever reason, NHD can step in and say, well, we'll cover the extra debt that you have. Um, Plus, when working with NHG, because you'll have an extra insurance, the banks will say, well, we like having uh, an extra insurance in place, so we'll actually give you a lower interest rate. Um, to be able to make use of the NHG, you pay a one-time fee of 0.6% of the mortgage amount. Now, we have a third, third column with the question if it's tax deductible or not. Um, what you can see, all the costs that are related to money, really, or to your mortgage, are tax deductible. So we're talking the mortgage deed, the uh, bank or uh, mortgage advisor. Uh, if you have an appraisal for some kind of crazy reason, then the appraisal will also be uh, tax deductible. Um, and the NHG costs are tax deductible as well. The other ones, unfortunately, not. Um, then, when it comes to payment terms, uh, it's a little bit different again than, than from buying an existing build. As when buying an existing build, you pay a one time uh, or you pay at all at once when actually getting the ownership of the property. When buying a new build, you have two payment terms, or two. It's it's split up in in two uh, yeah two factors. First of all, the uh, purchase price and um, or the, the, the price of the land and the costs that you make when buying a property. So when I'm talking about the costs, I mean 
um, your mortgage advisor, for example, the um, technical inspection that you might have, um, the VAT, that kind of stuff, the notary costs. That is what, what I'm talking about, the costs. Um, plus, you'll at that moment also pay the price of the land that your property is on. So this is typically around like, uh, I would say, 35 to 40 percent of the overall costs that you have um, uh, when buying a new build. If the property has already been built up to a certain extent, because you might be buying into the project at a later stage, then you'll also be paying for the phases that have been completed up until then. So if the foundation has been laid, if the walls, other walls have been laid, um, maybe the roof is already on there, those kind of things you'll pay um, as well if the property has already been built up to a certain extent. This all happens at the signing of the transfer deeds. Now, keep in mind, when signing the transfer deeds, that is officially also the moment that you become owner of that property. Even though the property has not been built yet, you have uh, at that moment become owner of the private usage or the, yeah, the private usage of that property right, so to say. Um, but it doesn't stop there. Then we go to, to the other um, um, yeah, part of the costs that are involved. And this uh, all lands into a building depot or a building deposit. And how that works is every time a phase is completed uh, from that project, you will pay that percentage of um, how much of the property has been finished. So let's say 10% of the property has been finished, then you're going to be paying 10% of your mortgage costs. If 20% of your uh, property is finished, you'll be paying 20% of your mortgage costs all the way up to 100. You can imagine that at one point, 90% of the property is finished. Still, you cannot live in it because the delivery hasn't happened. Uh, but you'll be paying 90% of your mortgage costs plus 100% of your rent. So keep in mind, you, you will need to have some additional yeah, own funds available uh, to cover those double costs. Because unfortunately, the bank or the mortgage uh, will not uh, yeah, cover those costs. <clears throat> These terms, the 10%, the 20%, the 40, 50, that will all be determined and defined in the uh, purchase agreement that you'll be signing. Um, so you'll know beforehand what you can expect in regards to cost and when you'll be getting the highest double cost, et cetera. Then um, the overall process. Well, I'm going to skip through everything and make sure you guys see the whole um, timeline. So how it works. Um, first of all, first bullet point, we have the search and subscription phase. Um, this is where you'll be looking mostly on, on Funda, but also on the developers' websites. On uh, well, no, I'll show you a little bit later where to find all the listings, but you'll be checking out those websites um, to uh, yeah, be up to date on what kind and how many properties there are available. Let's say you are interested in a property and a property is still available, then we'll actually schedule a viewing, um, <clears throat> well, not a viewing, but more a meeting with the selling agent and or the developer of the uh, property. Um, we'll go to their office, have an extensive meeting where they'll share all the information we need about the property, about the project, um, what the timelines are, uh, what the options are in regards to finishing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, we'll have around, let's say, one and a half weeks um, to yeah, go through all the documentation and uh, pretty much make a decision, to be honest. Um, we'll receive uh, the, all the documents. I'll go through it. We'll do a price benchmark, make sure that the price that is uh, listed is fair and, and um, in line with the purchase prices of properties in that same neighborhood. We'll then potentially also have the technical expert go through the technical description uh, with us all, and make sure that that is in line with our expectations, and then we'll actually make a decision. We might have another meeting with the selling agent or developer uh, with additional questions, but uh, not necessary if everything is clear already. Um, then <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll make a decision. Let's say we agree to everything and we want to move forward. Then we'll sign the purchase agreement and the building contract. When buying an existing build, you only uh, sign a, a purchase agreement, but when buying a new build, you'll sign a purchase agreement, meaning you agree to purchase the project, but you'll also sign a building contract. And the building contract is like a, um, where you give green light to the builder, or, yeah, to the constructors to sign or to uh, build the property. So um, you need to give them permission to build your property pretty much. Um, this is also the moment that together with Andrew or with your bank, you'll apply for a mortgage. Now, this typically takes you know, between four to six weeks. 
um, to get everything accepted. And then um, and yeah, from there on, not a lot can go wrong anymore because you've secured your property and you've secured your finances. Um, however, um, and this is something that is a little bit different as well, before a property can actually um, start their construction and before a project can actually be seen as um, uh, yeah, a, a pro project that will successfully be built, uh, there are a few factors or requirements that need to be met. One of them is that 70% of the whole project needs to be built, or sorry, needs to be sold. Um, the municipality has needs uh, to be given out all the necessary permits. Um, well, and then a few other minor things that, um, that that all need to be met and are defined in the contract that we're talking about. Um, if everything is met, then you'll receive, well, they call it here, the hooray letter. Um, and that is pretty much the letter where it says, hey, we'll all receive green light. We're ready to kick things off. This is actually the moment that you'll go to the notary, sign the transfer deed, potentially also the mortgage deed. That is the moment that you become owner of the project. And that is the official moment where um, the, the builder can start building the, the, the property. This is also the moment that you start building your mortgage installments. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, from there on, you'll start paying, you know, the five, 10, et cetera, et cetera percent. Now, this is a uh, the, the longest period where um, you don't really uh, do a lot yourself, but you'll just be sitting in anticipation and might be driving by the project to see how far they are. But this is where the building actually starts to be built. Now, this is around um, yeah, between nine to uh, 15 months where um, yeah, they have the time to build the, the project. Depends a little bit on the amount of workable days you have in a year. Um, obviously, you have 365 days in a year, but not all of them are workable days, so to say, because you have the vacation days, but you also have um, stormy days, very cold days or very hot days, all seen as non-workable days. So from the 365 days, you have around, yeah, I think, uh, 200 workable days. Um, well, you can imagine that uh, 9 to 15 months means, uh, you know, around two years almost in regards to workable days then. <clears throat> um, when the property is finished, then uh, we'll have the delivery. We might have a technical inspector that joins us to the delivery to again, make sure everything is in line with what we uh, agreed upon. And uh, from there on, you also get the keys of the property. Now, this is when uh, the, the finishing happens is really when the project is over. However, you do have, and, and we'll see this uh, later on as well, the guarantee period. And that is where you, know, you kind of have a warranty on your property. Just like if you're buying a bike or a car, you'll have a warranty on the property as well. And certain things are mentioned, or um, it is mentioned how much warranty you have on all certain things. So this is, I think, the, yeah, the next slide. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Well, it's actually the, the, the slide after this. Do it like this, and then come back to the one before. So you have a um, have a warranty on your property, or a guarantee, how they call it here. Um, first of all, you have your standard uh, standard guarantee, your contractual guarantee, and this is just you know your basic things for um, three months, then your uh, six months for maintenance, five years for hidden defects, and then twenty years for actual major defects like um, you know foundations that are cracking, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of projects nowadays, they go for extra coverage. They can choose to actually work together with Woningburg, SVK, or Baugrand, which are institutions like insurance institutions that offer extra um, uh, warranty or extra guarantee. This is mentioned in the standard uh, terms and conditions that you'll receive with the purchase agreement, um, but you'll receive typically six years of extra guarantee. And then on specific parts, um, yeah, it can alter also on that specific project. Now, to go back a little bit on the 5% rule, what is that? Uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's just a legal right of the buyer, something that every buyer has, has um, or can, can point towards. And this is uh, something that is applicable uh, or can be applicable at the delivery of the project or yeah, in the beginning of the warranty period. Uh, because typically the last payment that you make um, towards the contractor, towards the developer, is 10%. So I was talking about the 40% finished, 40% mortgage payments, la 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 la, up to 90%. And then your final payment is typically 10% to go from 90 to 100. And then, you know, the property is also finished 
100% at that time. You can choose to make your, uh, use of your 5% rule. And that means that you pay 5% to the builder, contractor, developer, but you choose to keep 5% uh, in the notary's deposit or the notary's depot. And you can use that 5% for any defects that might happen in the shorter term after the, de the delivery. So if, for example, you know the, the um, uh, heating system stops working or a window doesn't open properly, um, these kinds of things, then you can say, well, you first need to fix it before I pay you out the last 5%. Um, this is not just applicable for you know, your own property or your own apartment, but also for the common areas. So for the hallway, uh, for the elevator, that kind of stuff. Um, now, if there are any defects after the delivery, we always advise you to not free up the um, amount equal to the defects, but actually keep you know, the, the uh, 5% to give the developer or contractor a higher incentive to fix those issues as uh, quick as possible. Uh, so something we advise, make use of your 5% uh, uh, rule right. Uh, so that's the, the contractor make sure that he really finishes 100% of the property and not 99, not 95 or anything like that. Um, okay, well, we went over this slide. Then where are we going to find these properties? Well, um, first of all, we have a website in the Netherlands. It's all made very easy for us. It's called the nieuwbouw-nederland.nl. Um, and this is just like a, a, funda, or, yeah, a funda website, but then focused on new build properties. So you can find uh, pretty much all the new build projects that are out there uh, on this website. Uh, however, it might be the case that a project has already started and then, you know, two weeks afterwards, it'll be listed on this site. Things move quickly. So uh, it's not that you can solely trust just on this website. We always advise you also to keep a, a, an eye on the uh, municipality websites that you're looking at. So if you're looking in Amsterdam, have a look at the municipality website of Amsterdam, because on there, they will also mention projects that will come up in the next couple of months. Um, uh, same goes for the other cities around. Now there are um, uh, project websites as well. And uh, what I mentioned with, a, or what I mean with a project website is uh, one project can sometimes develop multiple buildings. So for example, I live in a neighborhood that is all part of the same project. So I, uh, if you guys are a little bit familiar with Amsterdam, if you know uh, Amsterdam North, right next to the Adam Tower or behind the Eye Museum, there's a whole new neighborhood built there. Uh, multiple buildings, but it all falls under the same umbrella called Anhet A. And that's that's the project called. Um, so at one point I was subscribing to a certain property. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get that one, but because I was already sub uh, subscribed to that project, I was able to get another property a little bit quicker because I was higher on the list in that sense. So good to subscribe and to uh, keep an eye on the yeah, bigger project websites there. Uh, Funda is, a, is an obvious one as well, um, not as up to date always as the newbouw-nederland.nl, just because Funda is really you know, focused on existing builds, but new build projects will be on there as well. Um, and it might be the case that if you see something on there that you're lucky that it's still available and definitely reach out. Um, last one is a big one as well, especially in the new build uh, world, so to say. Um, a lot of selling agents will uh, reach out to uh, well, buying agents before the project is even listed on their own website, before it's listed on the municipality website or on the uh, Funda or newbound dash Nederland websites. Um, a network of your buying agent will, will be of high, uh, high value as well. Um, all right, Andrew, would you like to enlighten us with some financial topics and mortgage information? Sure. Thank you, Lido. Thank you very much. I think some of the things I have already been discussed, but I'd like to focus a bit more on the real differences if you compare it with buying an existing property. Of course, with an existing house, you'll have the purchase costs, so for example, the transfer tax in a lot of cases, and you also have to evaluate the property. But with new construction, is it's a bit more easygoing. It's, uh, well, vrij op naam, free by name, as they call, there isn't an actual transfer. So uh, you actually save on the 2% transfer tax and the market value is actually determined by the purchase price plus any additional work that you might have to do. I'll elaborate a bit on that later on. 
maybe to uh, to show you an example. Uh, if you look at the on the left, let's say by an existing uh, property for 500k, well, there's transfer tax of 2%, which is around the 10. Uh, you have some notary costs, the appraisal report that actually evaluates the property, our fee, and of course the fee for uh, expert housing network. If you would look at all of these costs, this is ju just to give you a bit of an uh, idea, an example, the total cost would be 518,700. Well, here in the Netherlands, you can only finance 100% of the market value of the property. So you're limited to the 500K, assuming that it's also the uh, value that has been stated in the uh, valuation of the property, meaning that your own capital required should be around that 19,000 euro that you see here. If you look at the right-hand side, looking at new build, you buy something for 500K, there's no transfer tax. You only pay at the notary for a mortgage deed. There's no valuation, as Ludo already said. And then again, you have our fees. And as you can see here, well, the total cost is significantly less than if you would buy a existing property. Um, looking at the actual market value, so as I said, uh, if you could go one slide back, <laughs> would be great. I think, right? Yeah, I think I pressed uh, pressed too quickly. Ah, okay, 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 all right, all right. <laughs> ah, yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, there we go, this one. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so looking at the market value of a new build, of course, you'll have the cost for the ground, the construction, but there's also, normally you'll find some additional work that needs to be done uh, for you to actually look at uh, finishing the property as it is. So there are a lot of properties that, that are delivered without a kitchen sometimes, or with a quite basic kitchen, you still have to do some painting. So these are all kinds of additional work that you need to include as well, uh, if you want to include it in your mortgage application. And you have to fill in a form called the home improvement specification form, saying what you're planning to do. And that can be financed in full. So let's say you buy a property for 500K, but you still have to finish up the kitchen. Um, you have to, uh, maybe you'd like to extend uh, the property if there's a, a possibility for that, meaning that you maybe need to add another, let's say 60 to 70K, where you can fill that in, in something called the home improvement specification form, and that can be financed in full. So always make sure to double check also with the selling agency to see, okay, what's already included. Uh, is that already included with a kitchen? Uh, how the, will my bathroom look like? Uh, is that quite basic or can I have some additional work to upgrade that? So normally what we see clients do is having, well, let's say another five to 10% on top of the purchase price to finish the new build as they actually would like to see it. A very important one, I think Lula already mentioned that, is that you already start paying for the mortgage as soon as the construction uh, starts. So normally you pay for the ground immediately at the notary and the remaining am amount is actually put in something called a construction deposit or building deposit. Uh, and your, let's say your building, um, yeah, building period is actually uh, divided in certain phases. So every time there is a new phase, you will see that your monthly payments will increase a little bit. So you're still at a lower level. And then up till the moment that you receive the keys to the property, you will see that your monthly payments are going to increase with every phase that's finished within the building period. Meaning that you don't actually know <laughs> how much your monthly payments will be during that construction period. So I think it's very important to be aware of the fact that you'll have double living costs. And normally during that construction period, we give as the rule of thumb that you roughly pay 80% of the new monthly payment during the construction period, knowing that we'll start at a lower level and then increase to 100% as soon as you get the keys to the property. So you must be aware of the fact that you'll uh, have double housing costs, the new mortgage, which will start at the lower point, but then increase over time. And of course your current rent or your current mortgage, if you already own a property. So you need to have either enough savings or be willing to uh, save significantly less during that construction period. There are a few important things to, uh, to keep in mind. It might be that the construction has already started 
And if that's the case, then sometimes you'll see that there is an interest to pay, a construction interest, which can also be included in the mortgage. That actually means that the constructor already did some, well, made some costs to already start the project, already paid some amounts in advance, and that's a way of, of them getting that back. After you've signed the purchase agreement, you also have a legal cooling off period of normally one week. And uh, normally when you sign a purchase agreement, whether that's uh, existing with an existing property or new build, there is a financial clause in it. Meaning that, uh, well, if there's a financial clause of two months that we as your mortgage advisor have two months to arrange the mortgage for you. Well, as Ludo said, normally, uh, well, uh, with existing properties, the financial clause is four to six weeks with new construction you get a bit more. In practice, the mortgage gets arranged actually within a few weeks, but it's always nice to have a bit of a buffer uh, that, well, let's say for any reason, mortgage provider rejects that we can st still switch to another one. And I think personally, the most important one, uh, the most important date in this uh, purchase agreement are the suspensive conditions. Uh, I think Lud already uh, gave exactly the same example here. Normally, there are specific conditions that need to be met. And as soon as these conditions have been met, you get the hooray letter saying, hooray, all these suspensive conditions have been met. So we can start building the property in a few weeks, for example. So normally, the suspensive conditions are, well, 70% of the properties need to be sold uh, or the environmental permit needs to be attained. As soon as that moment is hit, we can, uh, well, you can actually start uh, uh, planning the appointment at the notary office. Why is this important, uh, these suspensive conditions? Because the mortgage offer that you receive needs to be long enough to bridge that period of either the six to nine months that we normally see. So not all mortgage providers uh, provide that. Some have specific uh, other terms and conditions if you buy a new build. Uh, but it's very important to know that we have a mortgage offer that's long enough valid to bridge that period of the suspensive conditions. So that's of course something that we'll have a look at together when we compare all the mortgage providers. Of course, you can always make your own estimations online about how much you could borrow, but we always advise our clients to plan in a telephonic appointment or could also be a video call. Or we can meet at our office, uh, our offices actually uh, in the Netherlands where we can have a bit more of an accurate calculation to see how much you could borrow. Uh, and it's free of charge, so we're happy to to walk you through all the uh, all the options here. I've also shared the uh, the link in the chat uh, for you to schedule a mortgage appointment. Okay. Back to you, Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. So, um, well, some some final tips, uh, maybe a bit a bit of a summary we already talked about. Good to check for you guys on uh, double costs if there's extra work needed. What the timing is going to be like. Uh, check that with your buying agent to see what kind of effect that will have on, on your, your double calls, for example. But definitely also check this with your mortgage advisor as it might have impact on the kind of mortgage you can request and um, on which mortgage lenders you can work with. Um, it's very good to consider the technical review of the documents. Um, obviously, we as a buying agent will go through this and make sure you're aware of everything, but it can't hurt to have an additional pair of eyes um, and check the technical documents. Um, see if the uh, 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 builder, contractor, developer is working with a um, additional insurance company like SK, SKW, Woningborg, or Bauverland. And if so, check what kind of additional guarantee or warranty you can expect. Um, well, referring back to the extra works, calculate what kind of cost that will uh, mean for you. Uh, and, and typically, the good thing is, is that you can add this towards your, your mortgage as well. Uh, but it is important to know this beforehand so that you can apply immediately for the yeah, full amount with your mortgage lender. Um, and then at the delivery, it never can hurt to actually have an additional technical expert come in and, and check um, that everything that has been built uh, is built in line with um, uh, expectations, but also in line with the agreements that are made. Um, then the packages uh, or the package that we offer in regards to um, a new build property. So we, we offer other packages as well, but when looking at a new build, the, the as you saw, the process is a little bit different than buying an existing build. 
Um, so well, th th this is what we we offer here. Obviously, a personal intake as well. So um, you can schedule a call uh, free of charge and um, see what we can do for you and see what uh, what kind of collaboration we can enter into. Uh, we'll do a search, so we'll um, yeah, keep an eye on everything that is in the market, see if anything meets your requirements, and uh, if anything does, send it to you and see if uh, you know it might be something for you. You'll uh, have access to a buying consultant during the whole process. Um, typically, one buying consultant, but uh, we uh, fully work as a team. So, you know, if one of us uh, are on leave or anything like that, we'll all be informed about um, about your situation. We'll join you to all the meetings with the seller agents and the developers. We'll review all the new build documents that uh, we receive from the uh, selling agent or developer. Um, we'll, we'll go through all the uh, checklists and point of attention to make sure that you know that the process is in line with how the process should and uh, normally go. Um, we'll do a price benchmark, like I mentioned before, make sure that the price this, uh, price that is asked um, is in line with the uh, 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 yeah, other projects in the area. Um, if possible, we'll do a negotiation on the price. Then uh, if we come to a deal, we'll do a contract review, go through all the legal documents, make sure you're aware of what you're buying and that, uh, that you are still happy to do so. Um, from the moment that you sign the purchase agreement up until the moment that you sign the transfer deed will fully be there for the uh, pre-transfer support. Um, make sure that all your answers are questions and uh, if all your answers are questions, all your questions are answered. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much hold your hand throughout the whole process. Uh, if you want to make use of any third parties like a technical inspector, we'll book them for you and uh, handle all the communication between them as well. Um, total package 3,450 euros, including VAT. We ask a deposit payment of 499 to get everything started, and then the rest is only due completely at the end uh, when we get you to the notary to sign the transfer deed. Um, that's it, pretty much. Uh, what you see is what you get, a fixed fee. Um, it's, a, it's a no cure, no pay uh, besides the deposit. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty easy standard there as well. How about you, uh, Andrew? <clears throat> Thanks, Lou. So our fee starts at around the 2,900. Uh, good to mention that our fee is also tax deductible. So you get more than a thousand euro back <laughs> from the tax authority. Jealous. Uh, so that's, I think, a nice bonus for, for everyone, especially since uh, it might be a quite expensive uh, process buying a property. Um, we're completely independent, so we compare all mortgage providers for also keeping in mind which are more expat friendly or accept expats and which won't. Uh, it's an all-in fee, so including applying for any insurances. And the nice thing to mention here is that we also have an in-house acceptation team. So we have a, actually a department called Smooth Operations that already checks all the documents before we send it to the mortgage provider so we can be certain about the acceptance of the whole mortgage. And because of that, we also have had some priority lanes with a lot of mortgage providers saying that, well, if there comes a VZ mortgage application, then we can, uh, well, give them a quicker processing time because we know how efficient they work. So we're happy to, to help all of you. I've already said, uh, well, share the link in the chat as well for you to schedule a free of charge call with one of our mortgage advisors. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely of added value to, to work, uh, work with you guys. Thank you, Lilo. Um, all right. Well, the Q&A, I think we received a bunch of questions already um, in the chat and in the Q&A. If you do have any additional questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A now. Rick, would you like to uh, to assist us? Hi, uh, guys. Uh, great webinar. Thank you. I think it was very informative. Um, Andrew, I have one question for you. Someone asked what the difference is between the mortgage advisors. Is it just the interest rates or is it a bit more? A good question. <laughs> Quite broad, I have to say as well. Uh, but uh, it's not only the interest rate, but also the terms and conditions that we look at. So just to give you an example, I think a new build is quite a specific condition that you have to keep in mind. There are mortgage providers where the offer availability is, for example, only three to four months. If that's the case and the suspensive conditions are actually uh, longer, so six to nine months, that means that we can't have the mortgage with that specific mortgage provider. Uh, besides from, of course, uh, uh, experts looking at some mortgage providers that do or do not accept them uh, or having a specific period that you should have li uh, lived in the Netherlands, like a minimum period. 
or even how much you could finance if you're an expert. So there are a lot of things that we keep in mind so we uh, can actually choose the best mortgage provider for you. All right, thank you. Um, then I think a question for the both of you. Are you working with a no cure, no pay policy? Well, we, um, uh, we ask a deposit. That's a deposit is 499 um, and the rest is no cure, no pay. So if for any reason uh, you decide not to move forward with us, maybe potentially go to a new adventure, another country, um, or just see another existing build property and think, oh, I need that. Totally fine. Then uh, only the deposit is due and the rest is not. With our, our fee, it's only, it actually only becomes applicable as soon as you say, okay, I've signed the purchase agreement because then, of course, my team and I need to prepare for everything. But up to that moment, you can ask us as many questions as you'd like. Give me calls, send me emails, whatever uh, you prefer. So we can help you to do that. If I can, uh, normally would also like to have some documents up front so we can already check whether it's doable to get a mortgage for you or not. If not, of course, we'll inform you about this so we don't waste each other's time, let's say. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, then Andrew, another question for you. Can you get a mortgage if your income is from abroad or overseas? Could, could be the case. Uh, I think it's best to, uh, to schedule a call so we can discuss that further, but uh, there are certainly options for this. All right, thank you. Um, then what happens if the 70% conditions or environmental permissions are not obtained and money is paid to the contractor? Uh, does the bank reach out to the contractor or to the mortgage uh, uh, borrower or provider? Um, well, uh, so these, the, the suspensive conditions, I think uh, is what this person is uh, referring to. And um, these uh, will or will not be met before the um, transfer deed is signed. In other words, before the actual mortgage payments uh, kick in. So um, if for any reason the suspensive conditions are, are not met and the uh, yeah, start of the property or the um, build of the building cannot get started, then um, yeah, there, there aren't any costs that uh, need to be paid, luckily. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Um, then I got a lot of questions about this uh, during the webinar, but is it possible to rent it out right after the transfer? I think that's a, a quite a good question, uh, which is a question that most experts ask. Uh, um, what you have to keep in mind that normally mortgage providers don't like you to rent out the property. Um, yeah. Normally you have to switch it then to something called an investment mortgage if you'd like to rent out the property. And I think something uh, to add on, on that is that uh, with a lot of new builds, you also have a clause that you actually have to live in the property yourself. Uh, I'm not sure about the terms here, Ludo. I think normally they say you should live there for like three years, I think, right? Yeah, it depends a little bit which project you're working with, but normally they have a, a so-called non-speculation clause, meaning that you cannot um, uh, uh, rent or sell your property for, a for the first couple of years. Um, and this is to prevent also from investors, for example, buying the property then um, for, for a certain price, then building the property, takes one to two years and then after those two years sell immediately uh, so they won't actually make use of the property themselves won't you know turn it into a nice residential property but just quickly sell um, as the market is then expected to rise so there are uh, certain conditions to make sure or certain rules actually to make sure that that doesn't happen typically i would say three years indeed now, good to keep in mind, if you're buying into a homeowners association, then there might also be general rules on renting out uh, totally, uh, either short stay rent or long term rent. Some homeowners association only wants the properties in that association to be inhabited by homeowners, so to say. So um, yeah, check that out as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, Ludo, another question for you. Can the price uh, agreed upfront be reviewed or increased due to big uh, increase in, for example, material costs, inflation, or whatsoever? A, unfortunately, the answer is yes here. Uh, we don't see that happening too often, luckily. Uh, but up until the transfer deed is signed, um, the, the price can somewhat be increased based on valid reasons. So they cannot just say, well, we see that so many people are interested. 
uh, we're going to increase the price, but they have to come with valid reasons um, that the building, for example, uh, that the building costs have increased drastically, then uh, things can increase slightly, yes. All right, thank you. Um, then someone ask if you can tell a bit about crowd lease and its payments. Is it common in the Netherlands? And do you see it a lot with new builds as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very fair question, especially looking at places like Amsterdam. Um, yeah, ground lease is something that specifically in Amsterdam we see a lot. Um, it, uh, it, what, what ground lease is, maybe to introduce it a little bit, um, back in the day, properties was just like today actually, were, were quite expensive. Um, and the municipality came with the smart idea to say, well, you know what? instead of paying for the ground that your property is on you're just going to be leasing the ground for the amount of years that you are owner of the property which would be a lot cheaper because instead of paying let's say a hundred thousand euros for the ground you'll only be paying three thousand for the three years that you're living there to give a very easy example um, so yes that's a lot cheaper however at one point uh, they shifted a little bit because uh, the ground lease you know didn't have much value or impact on the value of the property um, and now it's just a capped way of, of receiving uh, some nice income for the municipality, <laughs> in my opinion, at least. Um, and this is what we see in the majority of the new build projects nowadays as well. It's based on the uh, uh, value of the ground at the time that the property is built, meaning that you can imagine that you know the value of the ground in Amsterdam is a lot more expensive now compared to 50 years ago. So ground lease uh, is on the rather high side now. Um, and it is reviewed, uh, depends a little bit on what kind of ground lease we're talking about. And, you know, we can get into that once we're actually looking at a specific situation. But um, you have certain types of ground lease, either perpetual or, or everlasting for certain time periods, or it can be bought off forever. But um, when it comes to uh, your typical ground lease, when you just make a yearly payment, then you pay that once a year together with your uh, uh, municipal taxes, like your garbage tax, uh, sewage tax, water tax, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Good to keep in mind um, is that, by the way, uh, the higher the ground lease, the more impact it will have on your mortgage cap as well. So uh, it might be that if you're looking at a property with a mortgage or with a ground lease of 2000 per year, that, ha that that has significant impact on your mortgage cap and might mean that you cannot purchase that property. Uh, easy rule of thumb here is your re yearly leasehold times 20 is what you could borrow less. That's so it has quite a significant impact. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, another question for you, Ludo. Where can you find the details about uh, uh, the Homeowners Association and how do you know whether it's allowed to rent it out? Yeah, so um, when buying a new build uh, the selling aid or the selling agent and or developer have uh, uh, typically already set up the basis of a, a homeowners association um, you'll receive a bunch of documents with uh, their um, a deed of division being one of them and in the deed of division there's a lot of information about what is and is not allowed uh, for example renting out um, and that kind of stuff so you'll receive the documentation beforehand and be able to read uh, what is and what is not allowed. Thank you. Um, then a question about the energy label. Some uh, properties have a label that is valid until let's say 2030. What happens after this period? Is it going to decrease or fall to B or C? Or yeah, what's the procedure? procedure? Yeah, good question. So, uh, well, an energy label is indeed valid for 10 years. Um, not much happens after then, to be honest. It just is <laughs> not valid anymore. Uh, and what I mean with that is that if you want to sell your property afterwards, then, uh, you know, you need to get a new energy label because you um, need to have a valid energy label at the time of transfer. Um, let's say your energy label expires in 2024 but you're only going to sell your property in 2028. You don't need to do anything between 2024 and 2028. Um, just at the moment that you want to sell your property in 2028, you'll need to uh, get a new energy label. Now, it might be that once we're in 2028, we have all these new technologies that make a property super energy efficient, or even uh, we now already have properties that actually create more energy than that they use with a, a whole bunch of solar panels, wind turbines, 
and uh, filled with like plants on the outside to keep it cool. So that, that's really cool to see, actually. Um, it might be that, you know, the uh, an energy label A has different standards than it had 10 years ago. So it might be that based on the new technology that's out there that you might go from an A to a B. Um, but keep in mind that the importance of uh, an energy label B compared to A, for example, might also change, that B is still seen as very energy efficient, just the new technology has, has uh, gotten better and better. Thank you. Uh, question for Andrew. Does the fact of already owning a property impact your application approval? Good question. Uh, if there's a mortgage on it, it will. So it might be good to... Uh... Uh, well, schedule a call with us so we can exactly look at what your maximum borrowing capacity is because normally every euro that you borrow needs to be repaid within 30 years if you want to make use of the interest deductibility. So that's really something that we have to keep in mind and the online calculators doesn't really uh, give you a good idea or don't actually include that in calculating how much you could borrow. So always good to schedule a call so we can discuss that further. Also looking at taking any surplus value of the current property into account for the next mortgage application. Thank you. Then we have the final question for you, Ludo. Um, I think it's a difficult one, but I'm, I'm curious if you have an answer. What is the typical cost of construction and cost of land per square meter in the Netherlands? Yeah, that's a very difficult one. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking in the, in the city center of Amsterdam, trying to rebuild an, or build a new property there, you know, you're going to be looking at 10,000 per square meter, if not higher. Um, if you're looking in a very rural area, you know, uh, somewhere where not a lot of people live, somewhere that is not very, very popular, it can be as low as 1500 euros per square meter. So it, I know that's a very broad range, but even though the country is quite small, there is, there is a big range of uh, yeah, prices per square meter. So it really, really depends on, on where you're looking. A good comparable um, or comparing method might be that just look at um, what the existing uh, properties are doing in that area. And then, you know, the newer, the better in, in the sense of price per square meter. Um, and that might give you a good indication of what um, a new build property will cost when, when um, uh, yeah, buying one currently. So, yeah, <laughs> I hope that All helps right. a little bit at least. That's it for the questions. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Rick, with uh, always loyally assisting with the Q&A and answering the questions during the webinar. Thanks very much, Andrew, for being our trustful partner when it comes to the financial side of securing a home. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, I hope we've added some value to you. If you guys do have some additional questions, maybe about your specific situation, uh, feel free to book a call with, um, well, either with Andrew or with me. You'll receive the recording, everything, uh, receive the record recording uh, tomorrow, um, in other words, um, uh, on Thursday. Um, yeah, and then I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks very much, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.